No doubt. Thanks very much for that. Let's go now to the Energy Minister, Josh Frydenberg, joins us live from Melbourne. And Minister, the government uh, backing this threat to the states of Victoria and New South Wales that their GST revenues could be hit if they don't pursue gas exploration and development. Can you talk us through how that would work? Well, Kieran, as you know, uh, the Productivity Commission are undertaking a review of GST sharing arrangements and will report back next year and the government will carefully consider those recommendations, bearing in mind that we want to do everything possible to boost productivity and economic growth. Uh, what we do see in the current GST sharing arrangements is a curious consequence where those states that do develop their resources, like Western Australia, are penalised, and those states that don't, like Victoria, end up getting rewarded. Now, that's not in Australia's long-term economic interest. So we'll await the Productivity Commission's findings, but already in their interim report, they've indicated um, that they do understand the need uh, for developing these resources uh, by the states. So, but, it, but it's a clear threat to Victoria and New South Wales, isn't it, that lift the moratoriums or you will receive less GST. That's a, as, as blunt as it gets. Well, it's even very unfortunate that this discussion has to be had at the moment because the states are so willfully blind to their own economic interests. Uh, if Victoria was to develop the 40 years' worth of gas resources it has, then the people of Victoria, the manufacturers, the households who rely on gas more than any other state would benefit significantly. You'd see more jobs, more investment and most importantly of all, lower energy prices. Indeed, the ACCC indicated in its most recent report that the transportation of gas from Queensland to Victoria costs more than $2 a gigajoule and this makes up more than 10% of the residential household gas bill in Victoria. So automatically, if they develop gas uh, near where it's needed, namely in Victoria or in New South Wales, then those people in those states will benefit greatly. Does this diminish further, though, the independence of the states within our federal system? The fact that you're saying you develop this, these resources, which the states have carriage over and, and jurisdiction over, you develop these or you, you receive less GST revenue. This does diminish the independence of the states, doesn't it? Well, the states are just being uh, mindlessly uh, recalcitrant in blocking the development of their own gas resources. The chief scientist of Australia, Alan Finkel, in his most recent report, uh, on the energy system makes it very clear that you can develop these gas resources on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, you can do so in a so scientifically sustainable way. That's what we've seen in the United States where the public there are paying three to four dollars a gigajoule and the public here are paying three to four times as much simply because in the United States they've had the shale gas revolution and the development of their gas resources, which has been a real boon to, uh, to the manufacturing sector and to households and families. So the evidence is in. You can develop gas resources in a scientifically sustainable way. You just need a willing state government. I point out that in South Australia they're developing the gas resources, but in the states of Victoria, New South Wales and in the Northern Territory, they're sitting on huge resources which to this point are undeveloped. But it's not just a willing state government, is it? It's also willing landowners. You need the buy-in of the farmers in the farming community. Well, I've been encouraged in recent days by comments uh, from the farming representative organisations that they are pre prepared to consider further development of these gas resources. You see, in the United States, the landowner owns the resource under the ground and is the great financial beneficiary uh, of the development of those resources. In Queensland, uh, fam fa uh, farmers have been uh, receiving tens of thousands of dollars for the development of their land for gas use, which has been able to complement the returns that they've got 
uh, from selling their agricultural produce. Uh, it hasn't been the case in the southern states uh, because the state governments there haven't helped make the, 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 economic, um, the economic case for developing these resources. The added problem you have in Victoria is that the existing gas developments are in the Gippsland Basin uh, and in the uh, uh, Otway Basin, which are declining reserves. They're in Commonwealth waters uh, and they are declining year on year. So there's an urgency about what the Victorian government needs to do. Mm. But unlike New South Wales and the Northern Territory, the Victorian government is not just banning unconventional onshore gas extraction, they're also banning conventional onshore gas extraction, which is completely unnecessary. Just back to the, uh, the GST question, in relation to WA, there's been a, a sense really from the government that the Commonwealth Grants Commission and the way it decides state shares is, is at arm's length from, from the, uh, the cabinet, from the executive. Now it looks like you're heavying that process. Is that fair, fair characterisation? Not at all. Uh, as Matthias Cormann and as the Treasurer have made it very clear, uh, we want, and the Prime Minister, uh, we want to see a fair allocation between states. Uh, but we have now got the Productivity Commission doing this report, uh, Kieran, and this report will be very important uh, in putting uh, advice to government to, to consider um, about this particular issue. And just recently, um, they put out an interim report where they've highlighted the differences between states. What we are focused on is productivity and economic growth across the nation. And we want to see these resources developed because if they are developed, we will see more jobs investment and lower energy prices, which should be in everyone's interest, regardless of their political persuasion. This week you're meeting with the gas uh, executives again. What, what exactly do you want detailed in this heads of agreement to ensure that their commitment in general terms is met over the next two years? Well, the Prime Minister secured very significant commitments uh, from the gas companies last week. It followed reports from the ACCC and the Australian Energy Market Operator that indicated there could be a shortfall of up to 107 petajoules of gas in the domestic market next year. The companies have agreed to meet that shortfall. In the first instance, providing 54 petajoules available to the domestic market and should it be needed due to a range of uh, unforeseen events like uh, inclement weather and the like which could uh, change the, uh, the gas needs uh, in next year, um, the companies will make available that additional 53 petajoules, in total 107. So we will have a further discussion tomorrow with the gas companies to work out the details and as the Prime Minister okay. made clear, um, this would be secured by a heads of agreement with the ACCC actually monitoring progress on their deal. Now, what about AGL with the Liddell power station at their uh, annual meeting? They're, they're very much forcefully uh, against the idea of selling it or uh, keeping it open, and yet Andy Vesey told you and other senior ministers that he would be open to that. What's, what's the position with that company? Well, Kieran, you're right. I was at the meeting together with the Prime Minister and other ministers when Andy Vesey said that he would be pre prepared to consider the sale of Liddell to a, another party. Uh, what we so are he's backtracking now, is, is that outcomes. right? The out well, let's just wait and see because his chairman has said that he will take the Prime Minister's request to the board uh, for either the sale or the ongoing operation of Liddell post-2022. But the, the main focus of the government is on outcomes. And the outcome is to ensure, again, that there is no shortfall uh, were Liddell to close in 2022. AEMO had indicated there would be a thousand megawatt shortfall in dispatchable power. That's what we're focused on ensuring does not okay. happen. Uh, we'll wait and see uh, what the company comes up with. But certainly the government uh, is seeking to, to resolve the problems in the energy system that have been building for many years, which Bill Shorten and Mark Butler seem to be ignorant of. Minister, appreciate your time this morning, this Monday. Thanks for that. A quick